All right, everybody. Ah, so here is the second trimester video. In your second trimester, they will test you for gestational diabetes. This is a super fun test where they give you a really sugary drink um, that's got a lot of carbs in it. And it tastes, a lot of people say it tastes like flattened orange soda, which is pretty accurate. It's, it's got a really kind of acidic aftertaste. Um, didn't particularly like it, but I drank it faster than other people, so apparently I stomached it better than others. Um, and then you wait a certain amount of time, and then they test your blood sugar and they're looking to see if you are gestationally diabetic, which means that you're just a little more sensitive um, to, to carbs and your insulin is a little more sensitive um, to carbs and sugars. And the concern is that your um, if your insulin can't handle all those sugars, then the sugars will get into the placenta and your baby will get too much sugar, which could mean that your baby is growing bigger than is safe to deliver, I think is the basic idea there. Um, unfortunately, I was considered, I was like right on the edge of being gestational diabetic and it was a pain. Um, I've heard that there are ways to get around the test so that you can be assured a positive or a negative result. I don't know if I recommend that or not. For me, I was sort of borderline. I honestly don't know if I would have had issues. I mean, my, my blood sugar was higher than normal. I know that for a fact. Um, but Technically, every pregnant woman's blood sugar is higher than normal. That's normal for pregnancy. Um, so it's really where do you draw the line at what is considered too high. So I don't have a whole lot to say, I guess, about that part of it. Um, it was financially a pain in the butt. Um, I had more doctor visits. Um, there was more cost. I had to get diabetic supplies, which are not cheap. Um, fortunately, I never had to use insulin. I was able to keep my blood sugar in check with diet and exercise. Um, I, I guess it was maybe kind of fun finding what foods I could eat and what foods I couldn't eat. It probably kept me at a better weight than I would have been had I not been diabetic and watching my blood sugar and keeping a log of everything that I was eating. Um, so there's a bright side to it, maybe. Um, you can certainly be vegan and a gestational diabetic. There's nothing. In fact, being vegan is a little bit better, I think, because if you eat healthy, I think vegans maybe are a little more familiar with healthier foods or alternatives out there. Um, but yeah, just eat healthy and exercise and you should be okay and, you know, restrict your portions that you're eating. Um, you might see a cattail in the screen here. My cat just jumped on my lap. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if eating unhealthy during first trimester would have caused it. I don't know if the PCOS was somehow involved. Um, but if you do end up with that diagnosis, it's going to be okay. Um, just do everything your doctor tells you to do, and, and it is totally doable on a vegan diet. Um, yeah. Uh, registering. Yay! That's a fun thing to do. Um, so second trimester, they, they recommend registering during your second trimester because it tends to be the month that you feel the best. Um, third trimester, you're not really going to be wanting to be on your feet for hours registering at a store. Um, we registered at Babies R Us and Target. Um, I recommend both. They were both really good. They both give you the little scan gun 
to, to go around and scan everything. Um, you're both able to edit your lists online so you can add stuff later online if you don't feel like walking around the store. Um, <clears throat> there, there, I do recommend, I do recommend um, registering, sorry, damn girl. I do, I do recommend registering in the stores because you will get a freebie bag full of samples and coupons. Um, we got most of our bottles that way, actually. Um, I think we got a bottle from both both stores. Um, and just, you know, good stuff, extra diapers, nursing pads, things like that. Um, and it's just fun to walk around and look at all the different stuff and scan stuff. And you don't need all of it. Um, but, you know, it gets you thinking about what you might need or what you might need to learn more about. Um, you know, you'll see something and you'll say, I don't know why that would be necessary. Maybe I should learn more about this process. I will say that Babies R Us, I mean, they're a baby store, so they are going to make registering fun. Um, they were really great as far as customer service. Like, they even gave me a bottle of water, which is really important when you're in your late second trimester. You tend to be thirsty. So, that was, and they had a bathroom in the store, which was good. <laughs> So that was, um, and you can take a break halfway through and just sit in the, the gliders and, and take, take a load off your feet a little bit. So that was, that was fun. Um, as far as shopping for maternity clothes, um, I found that Kohl's and Target were really great. Um, they both have maternity sections, if you're lucky. Some, it depends where, you know, your particular store. Um, Old Navy as well has maternity, which I found to be really helpful. Um, but the best one I would say is Kohl's. Um, they had 40% off their maternity stuff pretty much my entire pregnancy for the most part, which was really nice. Um, and then if you get those 30%, well, it's like 15, 20 or 30% they send them in the mail like every month and you pull off the sticker to see what percentage off you get. So if you get like a 30%, that's 40% plus another 30%, you can get some pretty affordable maternity clothes. And I found that their maternity clothes were all very comfortable. I was very happy with the Kohl's, um, Kohl's clothes. The last thing I wanted to talk about are doulas. Doulamatch.com is a great resource for finding a doula in your area. Um, we decided that this being the first pregnancy that we've ever had um, and wanting to do it as a natural childbirth, wanting to labor at home as much as possible, we felt that a doula would be very helpful in our situation. Um, they're not cheap. I think we paid about $600, which for our area is pretty much the norm. Um, a lot of doulas though, if you're financially strapped, they do have a sliding scale well, where they will accommodate, um, you know, your financial situation. Um, and depending on where you live, like if you live in a more, um, you know, urban city, you may pay a thousand dollars and that may be the going rate. So it really depends on where you live. Um, but I believe Doula Match, they will, most Doula websites will list on the website how much they charge and what um, different features they offer. Um, we interviewed one and we really liked her, so we went with her. Um, and usually uh, they'll set up like a backup doula and you'll get to meet the backup doula as well. And as it turned out, we ended up using our backup doula. Um, because of the timing of the birth. Uh, but we were very happy with the whole process and um, it was comforting to have someone come to our house and talk through our fears and concerns and she was actually able to listen to the baby and feel the baby's position and everything like that so that was really nice. Um, and I'll talk more about the birth in a later video but I did find a doula to be very helpful during the birth as well. So if you're interested in having a doula, check out that website. Um, there's other websites that may be helpful as well. Um, and they can be really useful um, in your second trimester in 
directing you toward different resources, classes, books, things like that, that might be able to help you get ready for the birth. So coming up, you'll see my third trimester and fourth trimester.